Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. He created the universe to him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worship. There is none greater than the Creator. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode in this series, Live Your Life on Purpose. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have discussed, and we remind you each time, the goal for each and every one of us is everlasting paradise, wherein we will be given anything and everything that we desire. And while this goal should, in theory, keep us focused and should dictate that we live a very determined and purposeful life. The unfortunate reality is we all become distracted. We become diverted due to the beauty and the adornment and the amusements found in this life. And the result, we forget ourselves. We forget our purpose and we lose sight of this most tremendous goal. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a critical problem that each one of us needs to address. We need to constantly focus and remember our hereafter. And we need to embody both the characteristics and the actions of the believer who is truly living his life for his hereafter, living his life on purpose. Previously, we discussed the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he gave that most profound and comprehensive advice to Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. In this hadith, he told him, be mindful of Allah. Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you in all of your affairs, guiding you, aiding you strengthening you, protecting you in all of your actions. My dear brothers and sisters, the reasons for being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reasons for remembering Him are many, with the obvious ones being all of the many blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. This is obvious. The example being, if you do not have a car and then someone comes to you and purchases for you a car and gives you the key and puts it in your name, will you remember this person? Of course you will. If someone comes to you and they purchase for you a new home and they sign this home over to you and they give you the key, will you remember this person? How often will you think about them and remember them in your dua? What about if you do not have an arm? Or if you were in a tragic accident 
and you had to have your arm amputated. Your right arm, and now you can no longer you know, make your dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about how the loss of your right arm affects your life. And then imagine if there were advancements in medicine, and some doctor came up with the ability to somehow, by the help of Allah, to give you a new arm. But the surgery was millions of dollars. But this doctor wanted to do it for you. And he gave you the surgery free of charge. And now you have this new arm back. Will you remember this doctor? Will you keep him in your dua? My dear brothers and sisters, the reasons to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be mindful of Him are many. And we are not even touching the surface. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِ Remember me, أَذْكُرْكُمْ And I will remember you. But my dear brothers and sisters, if there was ever a verse in the Qur'an that was heartbreaking and that caused you to cry, and if there was ever a verse in the Qur'an that should put each one of us to shame when this verse is read and recited, it is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ and so few of my servants are grateful. So few of my servants are grateful and thankful. For this episode, my dear brothers and sisters, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to talk about this characteristic of thankfulness, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so few of His servants actually have. So few of us are thanking our Lord the way He should be thanked. And from the very beginning of man's creation, the issue of ungratefulness and ingratitude has been discussed. We read in the Qur'an that after refusing the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bow before Adam, Iblis la'anuhullahi then said, ثُمَّ لِآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ The shaytan, he said, then I will come to them from before them and from behind them and from their right side and from their left side and you will not find most of them as thankful. This statement from the worst of liars, shaitan, it has proven to be true. And not only amongst the disbelievers, but unfortunately amongst the Muslims. Unfortunately, we have fallen into the trap of shaitan. And we have gotten so caught up in our comings and in our goings, that we rarely take the time to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the tremendous bounties and blessings that He has favored upon us. We are so busy conducting our daily lives, brothers and sisters, that we seem to forget where our sustenance comes from, and we forget all of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So now you start enumerating the things you are thankful for. I am thankful for my friends. I am thankful for my family. I am thankful for my house. I am thankful for my spouse. I am thankful for my children. I am thankful for my car. I am thankful for my job. And you produce this laundry list of things you are thankful for. But what about the not so obvious things? Are you thankful for your eyesight? Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away your vision 
and then all of a sudden you could not see these many things you just listed as being thankful for. And we know the weight of the blessing of eyesight from the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ described a man who had worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 70 years. And these 70 years were comprised of good quality worship, he said, and good quantity worship. Imagine 70 years. And then on the day of judgment, Allah tells his angels to take this man to paradise through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when the man hears this, he asks not to be judged based on the mercy of Allah, but he wanted to be judged based on his deeds because he felt he had a lot to put on the scale. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a choice. Be judged from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or be judged according to your deeds. And the man was confident as we would think he had the right to be. 70 years of quantity and quality of worship, that's something most of us cannot attest to. So the man said, I want to be judge based off of my worship. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took just one of the many bounties that he has given us that we don't usually remember. He took the favor and the blessing of eyesight and he put it on one side of the scale with all of the 70 years of good quality and good quantity worship on the other side of the scale. And that one blessing of eyesight outweighed those 70 years of good quality and good quantity of worship. My dear brothers and sisters, we can now begin to understand the meaning of the verse. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ shakur. And so few of my servants are thankful. Reflect upon that. Take a quick break and insha'Allah we will be back to continue this discussion of thankfulness and gratitude. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAYGB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The most profitable business. Would you like to know the business in which you earn the maximum profit? The secret is given in the glorious Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, 
verse number 261. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward to whom he wills. If you spend your wealth in the way of Allah, you'll get a return of 700 times. In business terminology, you'll get a profit of 70,000%. Is there any business you know of in which you'll get a better return? Invest today in the way of Allah. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, dear viewers. Before the break, we were discussing the verse that should bring sorrow and shame to every believer, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And so few of my servants are thankful. And we began listing out the obvious things that we are thankful for. But as was mentioned, what about the not so obvious things? What about, for example, your mobility? When you think of the things to thank Allah Azza wa Jal for, you don't usually think, thank you Allah for my legs. That does not immediately come to your mind. But what about if you were to lose one of those limbs as was mentioned? You would be thinking about it at that time. Who amongst you is thankful for their teeth? Have you even considered to be thankful for having teeth? These are not things we think about. But if any of you ever had a horrific toothache, and if you have, you know the feeling where you can do nothing. It's debilitating. You can't eat. Even drinking water hurts the tooth. And you go to the dentist, you feel that your life will end. An hour later, maybe there was an extraction, maybe a root canal. He did what he does, or she did what she does. And afterwards, you want to thank the dentist, you're so grateful, so thankful at everything he supposedly did for you. What about thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the remaining teeth? Or what about thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that tooth before it was causing you pain? Think about specifics, brothers and sisters. We know you are thankful for your car. Have you thanked Allah azza wa jal for the air condition in your car. These are the specifics. We know you're thankful for the food that you have been given. But are you thankful for your sense of taste and your sense of smell that allows you to enjoy this food in those meals? My dear brothers and sisters, if we try to enumerate, if we try to list out all of the things that we are thankful for or should be thankful for, we will never succeed and we will not be able to. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you were to even try to list out all of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, 
you would never be able to even count them. You would not be able to count them. We cannot even come close to listing them out, my dear brothers and sisters. But go back to the verse mentioned. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Yet so few of my servants are thankful. Again, this is a heartbreaking verse that should put each one of us to shame and that should make us cry to realize everything we've been given. But the truth of the matter is, as Allah says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ that so few of my servants are thankful. Allahu Azza wa Jal, He gives and He gives and He gives. Are you a grateful servant that embodies the actions of the servant who is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We present to you an example. Imagine if a stranger were to give to you one million dollars or whatever the equivalent would be in your currency 60 million rupees 4 million rials sorry I don't know many different currencies 2 million pounds some stranger comes and just gives you this money no strings attached he only wants your dua how would you feel towards this person Will you remember this person in your du'a? Will you be thinking about this individual? Of course. Now fast forward one month later. You have not yet met this individual in person. But it comes to your attention that he will be coming through your city by a plane and landing at 3 a.m. and only stopping very shortly before he takes off to go to the next city. So the question, this person just gave you one million dollars. Are you going to have the desire and the feeling of obligation to wake up out of bed at 2.30, brush your teeth, put on your best clothes that you purchased with the money he gave you, drive in your new car with the money he gave you, to go meet this person at the airport, just to hug them, to thank them, to tell them how much they change your life. Each one of us would want to do that. We would not even question it. There would be no choice in the matter. But let me ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, are we willing to wake up at 2.30 a.m., brush our teeth, put on our nicest of clothes and then go to our living room to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that last third of the night to thank Him for everything that He gave to us. Each one of you, if you were with me, you were thinking, absolutely, I'm going to go to the airport, I'm going to run, I'm going to be there. But do we go thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would we have that same feeling of obligation and the desire to go do so? Again, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ So few of my servants are grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives and He gives and He gives. What does He tell us to do in return? He tells us to do something that should be natural that we should do anyway. He says, فَذْكُرُونِي Just remember me. Just remember me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commands us to remember Him. Should we have to be commanded to remember Him? This should be automatic and obvious, right? Just like it's equally automatic and obvious to remember the one who gave you that million dollars. Nevertheless, we are commanded to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no problem, we do so, this is an easy one. So we follow the command, we remember Allah azza wa jal, and then the blessings 
simply continue. For Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِ So remember me, أَذْكُرْكُمْ I will remember you. For doing something that is so obvious, so natural, something we should all do anyway, thanking the one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remembering him for everything he has given you, for doing this natural act of remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that he will then continue his blessing by remembering you. Subhanallah. Wa qalilun min ibadiya shakur. And so few of my servants are thankful. My dear brothers and sisters, do not allow yourself to be from those who are described in this verse. Strive to embody the characteristics of thankfulness and of gratitude. Strive to always remember all of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. Not just the obvious bounties, as was mentioned, your car, your home, your family, your friends. But strive to remember the not so obvious bounties. The bounties such as your sight, your vision, which has a stronger weight than 70 years of good quality and good quantity of worship. Remember all of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And remember the single greatest blessing that Allah azza wa jal has given to each one of us the blessing of Islam. And remember how this blessing facilitates, insha'Allah ta'ala, the attainment of the goal of each and every single one of us, everlasting paradise. Until next time, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe To Him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, He is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent His messengers To warn His creatures Of the grave dangers Of worship of the than Allah there is none greater than the Creator Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAYGB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.org.